Hello, my name is James McLean and I'm one of two fish curators here at the Natural History Museum. My job, along with my colleague, is to look after the collection here, um, which you can see in the background here, just a fraction of it. We have around about 800,000 fish specimens at least. We have another five rooms above me, all filled with rows of cupboards, filled with uh, lots and lots of shelves, all full of specimens. And it's mainly used for scientific research. It's, it's a reference collection. People find things and they want to compare their specimens with our specimens. And so really any use you can think of for a dead fish, we're here to help. Um, my particular uh, area of expertise is with deep sea fishes. The deep sea is a very extreme environment. It's very cold and dark and, and obviously there's enormous pressure down there. So the deeper you go, the weirder things seem to get. And a lot of things have sort of two strategies when it comes to finding food. They either have very, very small eyes and use some means to attract their food towards them or else they have really enormous eyes and they actively hunt for food. And an example of the, the first thing would be uh, a fish here which I brought along called a pelican eel. And it has very, very tiny eyes. So it has to attract its prey using a light. And a lot of uh, deep sea fishes have lights on their bodies. Um, I'll just get this out. And the pelican eel has the light right at the very tip of its tail. So if this lives below a thousand meters down. So if we were there in the, in the sea, all we would see would be a little blue dot. What it does, nobody's ever seen it do this, but we would imagine that it moves that around to attract small animals, little shrimps, little fishes over. And then when they get close enough, it opens up this enormous bag-like mouth. That's why it's called a pelican eel. It's this huge big mouth and that opens up and the little animal will just get sucked in. And as you can see, the eyes are very, very small, just at the, the tip of the, the skull there. Um, this is a, another fish that you would find below a thousand meters. This is a, a kind of deep sea anglerfish called a football fish. And like the, uh, the pelican eel, it also uses lights to attract its prey. So it has light organs on the, the tip of each of these little tendrils here. There's like a little pocket of luminescent bacteria which the anglerfish acquires and uses those to produce its light for it. So it would move that around just like the pelican eel, attract the food. And also like the pelican eel, it doesn't use its eyes much at all. It depends much more on other senses to detect motion and movement round about it. So when something's closer, it can tell that it's there and then grab it. And the especially weird thing about anglerfishes is that as they live in an environment where food is quite scarce, um, one of the adaptations that they've evolved is that the, the males have got very, very small. Um, the female needs to re remain relatively big because she needs to um, eat a lot of food to create the eggs. But the male, because an egg is about a thousand times bigger than a sperm, has got much, much smaller. So this is a, a male here of the same kind of fish as this. And that's as big as he gets. And he's so small and useless and unable to look after himself, he can't actually survive without the female. So he has very big nostrils. He doesn't have any light organs or anything dramatic like that, but just big nostrils. And he uses those to find the female in the dark and then attaches himself to her and feeds off her blood supply like a, a little vampire. And that once they've connected with each other, they can then produce many, many more baby anglerfishes, but they require only a fraction of the energy they would do if he was the same size as her. Um, I have another pair of fish here that are from moderately deep down, sort of hundreds of meters more than thousands, um, but still deep down enough for them to have some quite interesting adaptations. These are called thread fin dragonfish. And as you can see, they have very long thread-like pectoral fins there. Um, if you look closely, you can see that the underside is covered in rows and rows and rows of little dots. And these are all light organs. So what this fish is doing is during the day, on a really, really bright sunny day, sunlight can penetrate all the way down to a thousand meters. Um, and what this fish doesn't want to do is for any predators looking upwards, it doesn't want to create a dark shape against the blue light above it. So what it does is it makes its whole underside glow very, very, very faintly, so that if you look upwards, it becomes invisible. And of course, during the night, it turns that off, because otherwise it would make it stand out. So it's actually using lights to camouflage itself, which is quite unusual. But I think the most interesting thing about this, this particular kind of fish is that there are um, differences between males and females. 
and this is the male and this is the female and if you look very closely you can see behind the eye the male has a huge big what we call the post-orbital photophore, it's the, the light organ behind his eye there and in the female it's much much smaller and what we think is going on here is that he's using this light organ a bit like the, the male peacock's using his tail as some kind of display to attract her attention. It's actually probably a disadvantage for him to have such a big light organ on the side of his head, but because that's the thing that she really likes, that's what he's got to do if he wants to pass on his, his DNA, as it were. And we're very proud of this. This is our um, specimen of a, a giant squid and it's one of the largest, most complete specimens of a giant squid in the world. I mean, it's such a fantastic animal, it's very bizarre. So there's only one animal that has a bigger eye than the giant squid, and that's the colossal squid. And the reason it has such a huge eye is this is an adaptation to the, the deep, dark depths at which it lives. And that's, uh, it has such good eyesight, it helps it to find its prey in the dark. And then it has these huge, long tentacles, and they have suckers at the end and they'll grab whatever it is it's chasing and then draw it back to the, the beak in the center there. And uh, that's where the, the squid starts eating things, basically.